Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am Richard Ross, your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a primary customer. Now, you know you've had it happen before. You've got a customer table, you've got a list of customers, but you've got two, maybe three of them that belong to the same company. You want to have individual records in your customer table for them so you can send them like individual emails or individual notifications of some kind. But as far as billing goes, invoicing goes, you only really want to set up one of them to be billed or to be on your, your printed mailing list or for any reason. This can be for family members too if you run a school. Maybe you want to have a record set up for mom and then the children have their own records but you're not going to mail stuff to them. So using one table, I'll show you how you can set up a primary customer and then have subordinate customers. Okay, here's my basic customer template. You can download this off my website if you want to. I'll put a link in the description below the video. Basic customer table, first name, last name, address, city, state, zip, all this stuff in here. And I've got an is active field in here. Is active is generally what I use to indicate that this customer is still around. You know, if they, uh, if they die or move out of the area or something, you can mark them inactive, and that takes them off of all of your lists. As I teach in my Access Beginner 1 class, you never really want to delete a customer record. Even if that person dies or is gone, you still want to keep them in there for hist historical purposes, for billing and stuff. But I'm going to add another one of these fields called Is Primary. Let's go into the Design View. Right-click, Design View, Is Primary. We'll make that a yes-no field, and I'm going to default that value to yes. All right, so as we enter records in, they'll be primaries by default. And then if you want to add a child record for them afterwards, you can. All right, let's save this, Control S, let's close that down, let's open it up. Now everybody in here right now, you'll have to give a value to, because these will all be null, so let's make these all primary. Let's open up our customer form now, and we're gonna add is primary to the customer form as well. Now, I'm going to get rid of this notes label. We don't need that there. Now, I could copy and paste this checkbox here or just grab a new one and add it or go to my add existing fields box now because is primary is going to be right there. It comes in from the table. So click and drag that, drop it right there. There's my is primary. Slide it up right there. All right, so let's close this, save it, open it back up again. All right, so there's me, primary. All right. Everybody's primary right now. Let's say I want to add a secondary person for my account. Okay. So now I can go to a blank new record. I can put in, let's say, my daughter. All right. And I'm going to mark this is primary no. Okay. So let's close this down now. I'm, I don't have to bother putting in her address. You can if you want to. Right. But if I go to her record now, you can see I'm just going to leave this stuff blank. Let's say she lives with me. She doesn't right now, but let's say she did. And I don't want to have to mail her notices or any of that stuff. She's on my account. I can still put in her email address if I had an email address field in here. I can still put in her phone number so I can have her number to call her. But as far as billing goes, she'll just be on my account. All right. Now, when this when it comes time to making orders or invoices or your mailing list, you want to be able to generate a list of just your primary people. That's what queries are good for. So create, query design, bring in my customer table. All right, I cover this in my beginner classes. Let's say I'm making my mailing labels, okay? So I'll want first name, last name, address, city, state, zip, country. And I'm going to want is primary. I'm gonna bring this is primary up to the front here because I'm gonna put a criteria on it. And the criteria is going to be true just like that. So now when I run this query, I only see my primary users. I don't see all the subordinates. All right, let's save this, Control S, as my customer primary only queue. And now I can use this query in the rest of my database to do things like make mailing labels. Any other object I create now, right? Let's say, uh, let's create mailing labels, all right? 5160s are fine, that's fine. All right, bring in first name, last name, enter address, enter city, state, zip, enter country, next. All right, how do you want to sort it? Uh, we'll go last name, and then first name, next, and then, okay, looks good. 
You always get this. Some data may not be displayed. That's just an error in the labels. But look, now I'm only getting labels for the people who are primaries. I don't see the subordinates. All right, close that. And yeah, we can rename this to uh, customer mailing label primary only R or whatever you want to call it. But now you've got in your form the ability to mark people primary or not. Now, this is just one way of doing this with a single table, having a primary and then subordinates. You can do it with two tables if you want to relate two tables together. You can do it where you've got a family table or a company table that has all the main company information in it. And then you can have a person table where you link uh, people to the company. And then the company gets the billing and you can specify a primary person at the company. There's a lot of different ways to do this. In fact, that is exactly how I'm setting up my Access Developer 14 class right now. We're building a POS system. And I've got a group table, and the group can be either a family or a business or just simply a group of customers. And then inside of each group, you've got individual people listed. So this is another way you could certainly do it. That's the beauty of Access. You can set up stuff however you want. Both ways have their pros and their cons. I think for beginner users, this method's actually easier to use. Just set up a primary person. If you don't want invoices going to anybody else, then don't mark them as a primary. Now, what I've done is I've added some cool features, and this is for the members only. If you want to become a member, I'll give you information at the end of this video on how to become a member. Just join my channel. And what I did was I added some extra stuff up here. For example, you can see now that I've got two children in this table. If I double click on this, it brings me to my children. It filters the records based on my children. It hides the fields that aren't relevant, too. So children, you don't want to have a separate address field in here for them or have the stuff like customer sense and all that. Turn that off to unfilter, right? All of these things only belong to the primary, okay? If I make this person not a primary now, it hides that stuff. Also, if you mark someone as not a primary, you can pick who their primary is right here. So Walter Jones is a child of Sue Jones. Want to go back to Sue's record? Double click and it puts you on Sue's record. See that? This is a little bit of code in here. A couple lines of code will show you how many children that, that person has. right? And it will filter or unfilter based on that record. See? Jim Kirk, no children. All right. Actually, he does have one and I mentioned that in the other video too. <laughs> I'm a Star Trek nerd. Okay. So, a little bit of extra code in here to let you be able to jump back and forth. All right. Also, what I did, I couldn't help myself. I made a list, a customer list box. All right. This customer list box lets you double click and jump to a customer's record. Or you can click over here and see who their children are right here and jump to one of them as well. Isn't that, key, isn't that cute? See that? And these are for paid members. How do you become a paid member? Just go to my YouTube channel and click on that join button. And... Once you do that, you'll get some options there. All right, there's silver, gold, platinum. Silver members and up get access to all my paid videos, my paid tech help videos that I put on YouTube. The extended versions, the extra cut. This one happened to be about 30 minutes long where I put in all that extra stuff in this video. This is only my second one. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm learning. But thanks for watching, and even if you don't want to become a paid member, that's okay. I'm still going to keep making these free videos. All right, but make sure you subscribe to my channel. Subscribing is free. All right, ring the bell, click on the little, the little bell icon there, and you'll get email notifications whenever I release a new video. And nothing's going to change. I'm going to keep making these free videos for as long as I can. And make sure you also stop by my website and subscribe to my Access Forum. Lots of cool stuff goes on there. If you have questions, post them in my tech help tech support page or of course you can always email me I get tons and tons of email so you're better off making a comment on one of my videos or posting it in my tech help page because if, if I get a lo really long email it, they tend to get shoved to the back until I've got a lot of time to answer them alright there's all my cool stuff Facebook Twitter YouTube all that if you haven't yet watched my access level one class please do it's free it's on YouTube it's on my website it's three hours long covers all the basics and if you like that level two is just one dollar and it'll get you started it'll get you an account on my website so you can go through and post questions and stuff in my forums as well that's only reserved for paid customers 
Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and you have a great day.